Just recently, I started streaming here on YouTube. So, now whenever you see me stream, you can visit the live stream and I'll be happy to see you there. But, if you miss a stream, don't worry, because I upload all the VODs of past streams on the channel. But, they're not public. They're unlisted in a special playlist that you can see on the home page or on the playlist page. The reason why I do it this way is so livestream VODs don't clutter up your subscription page. I always found it annoying how some channels upload way too much. Let's take Ludwig for example. He uploads shorts, livestream VODs, and videos. And all of them appear in my subscription page, making it very confusing to figure out what I actually want to watch from him, which is almost nothing. To be fair, I should just unsub from him. <laughs> but you shouldn't unsub from me, because livestream VODs will not be appearing in your subscription page. Instead, they will all be in one nice playlist that you can get to and watch all the VODs if you want to. Now, to the actual content of the video. On Windows, I use two languages. I'm Russian, so I use both English and Russian. To change a language, you can press Windows space, as you can see by the tooltip here. Let's imagine a situation. I'm on Discord, I want to type something in, I start typing, and suddenly I'm typing in Russian, while well, I expect it to type in English. Meaning, if I ever need to figure out what language I'm using, I need to change my language twice. First, to see what language I'm currently on, and the second time, if I was on the language that I actually wanted. Now, I'm a Vim user, I've said this many times, and as you can see by the background image of my laptop, so I don't want to be using the mouse to go here and see what language I'm using, it's just ineffective. For a similar reason for other things, I made state bulb, bulbs that exist so you can specify whether some state is on or off. Currently, this is for caps lock, and then I also have one for Vim mode. So I decided to do the same thing for languages. Now, when I press Windows space, I get another state bulb, which is yellow, meaning currently I'm using Russian, which is why new Vim doesn't work right now. And when I go back by pressing the same hotkey, I'm on English again. This class lets me actually make this thing work. But first of all, I have to give thanks to Depth Trawler and actually Geek and Anon for helping me. The latter two didn't actually know that they helped me, but they did. Because most of this code, I wouldn't know myself. I'm, I don't know how to make DLL calls. I don't know specific post messages, so on. But they did, so it's mostly their code. Just written as a class in my style and so on refactored basically. When I first reload the script, this function gets ran. And why only once? Well, it works kinda interestingly, because it only works the first time. This method returns the code of a language, and Windows uses codes for every single language layout. So by calling this method, we get that code, so we can understand what language we're currently using. After the first time that you call this method, all the following times it just returns the same code, no matter if you change the language or not. In other words, this method works only once per reload of the script. Which is why, instead of always calling this function, I actually call it only once and store it in a variable. This way we can actually track what language we're using by updating this variable every time that we change a language. The only caveat to this is that we have to use this class to change the language on our system, instead of other options potentially, like, I don't know, clicking on here and changing. But I personally only ever change my language by pressing Windows space, so it's not really an issue for me. And then, naturally, we use this change language method to actually change the language to something different. It takes in a language code, which we just got from this function, and uses it to request a message to the current window. And that is exactly why there is a try here. It gives that message to the current window, because for some reason on Windows, every window 
tracks its own language code, so it can technically fail. Don't worry though, I've tried many different places and it works everywhere except auto hotkey GUIs. Maybe that only spreads to auto hotkey GUIs that are in the same script, so different scripts maybe work, I haven't tried, but here I won't be able to change my language to something else using this class, which is why my hotkey to toggle my language is only active if an auto hotkey window is not active. But in pretty much every other situation this will work, so you can pretty much trust it. Now imagine that I turn on Russian and for some reason decide to reload my script. If we did nothing, it wouldn't update this state bulb, while the language actually stayed what it was before. To fix this, I have the static new method that automatically checks the language and if it's Russian, it creates the state bulb back. However, if you don't need this functionality, just delete it, but if you need it for a different language, then type in the language here, for example French. This class doesn't automatically support all the languages. I wouldn't go to such efforts for something that I'm not going to be using. So currently it supports English and Russian. And if you want to use more languages, you'll have to add the codes yourself. And the way you do that is by using the get current language code, which we looked at, and just displaying it somehow, or getting the information your way. You can see now that the current language that I'm using has this code. So you can take that and put it right here. And then you can name it however you want. This doesn't actually have to be English, it could be bleh. But essentially what I'm using this map for is to give random codes, which I'm not going to remember, and I shouldn't, actual names that I can remember. And then there's the reverse map, that is the words to codes. So, the opposite one. Reversing maps is not built in, so you'll have to get my library for that. Or implement it yourself, it's not too much code. You can use the current property to get the language that you're currently using, and that won't call this function that, once again, only works once. Instead, it will return the value of the current variable that you track, or rather this class tracks. And then also you can set the language either by using the word that you have in that map or the code. Just remember to add it here. But since I also want to use the state bulb, I implemented these two methods that change the language to Russian and then create the state bulb when it's Russian and another method to switch to English, which destroys that state bulb. After that, a toggle function. Because I only use two languages, I can essentially toggle them on and off and that is the exact thing that I use in my mapping. The current property actually returns the code, but if you actually want to use the word instead, that you can read more easily, then you can use current word. And that's it. You can now use this class to change your language and add more, maybe even those that aren't in your layout list. You can actually add more languages that aren't even here and still be able to switch to them. I'm gonna leave the links to all the files that I show in this video in the description. And if you enjoyed this video, press a like, type some comments, maybe have a question or a suggestion. Definitely subscribe so you don't miss my content, but most importantly, stay fresh, cheese bags, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye bye!